Hello, Snaps community. My name is Venkatesh Parasaraman, and I am a senior program manager on the Azure Synapse Analytics team. Welcome to the Azure Synapse Security Deep Dive series. In this video, I'm going to talk about network isolation with managed VNets. Why network isolation is so important when we are executing custom codes on Spark clusters that may use custom libraries or when we run data integration activities that may use third-party connectors, it is a good idea to isolate our workload from the workloads of other users who may be executing such similar activities. Synapse provides this network isolation with what we call as managed VNets. Interesting, isn't it? So what is a managed VNet? Each Synapse workspace comes with its own virtual network called managed VNet. These managed VNets provide full network isolation between the Synapse workspaces. Managed VNets are provisioned and fully managed by Synapse behind the scenes. So unlike your other VNets, you cannot see your managed VNet in your resource group. Okay, great. How do we create a managed VNet? It's so simple. When creating your Synapse workspace, you can simply enable managed VNet in the networking section. That's all you need to do. Synapse automatically creates this managed VNet for you when the workspace is created. But please note, you won't be able to enable or disable this setting after the workspace has been created. You have to choose it at the time of creation. So what goes inside the managed VNets? All the Spark clusters that are used by the different components of Synapse are provisioned inside the managed VNets. Spark clusters are used by the notebook that provides an interactive Spark coding experience. They are also used by Spark job definitions that provides batch execution of Spark applications developed in the IDEs. Spark clusters are also used by data flows that provides drag and drop interface to perform all your data transformations. Besides the Spark clusters, Azure integration runtimes or Azure IRs are also provisioned inside these managed VNets. Each Synapse workspace comes with a default Azure integration runtime called Auto Resolve Integration Runtime. Azure IRs can be used to execute copy activity inside the Synapse pipelines that perform data movement at scale. They can also be used to dispatch and monitor other data transformation activities in the Synapse pipelines that gets executed on various other compute resources. When a managed VNet is enabled, all the Spark workloads that uses the Spark clusters and the copy activity that uses the Azure IORs are executed inside the managed VNet, fully isolated from other Synapse workspaces. What are the main benefits of managed VNets? Number one, it's so easy to set up. Network isolation is typically achieved by VNet injection, where the compute resources are provisioned inside a customer managed VNet. But that involves a lot of networking knowledge to provision the VNets and set up the network security groups, etc. With managed VNets, you get all the benefits of the network isolation without the hassle of VNet injection. Number two, auto scaling. Oftentimes, Spark and data integration workloads needs auto scaling based on demand and peak loads, which would require for you to design your subnets with a pretty large address space, or you might end up running out of address space in your subnet. But with managed VNets, you don't need to create a subnet for your clusters. It's all automatically taken care of for you. Number three, advanced Spark security. Synapse Spark pools operate as a job cluster. Creating a pool within the workspace is just a metadata information for what will be assigned to each user when executing Spark workloads. So if I create a Spark pool of three to 10 nodes, each user using that pool gets to run their Spark jobs with three to 10 nodes. These Spark clusters of each user 
gets provisioned in a dedicated subnet inside the managed VNet. So, in addition to workspace level network isolation, managed VNet also provides user level network isolation for Spark workloads. That's a great security model. In addition to security, this also resolves noisy neighbor problems and provides greater performance for each user independent of each other. Number four, data exfiltration protection. Managed VNets together with managed private endpoints provide data exfiltration protection, which we will talk about more in our next video. Cool, isn't it? Is there anything in Synapse that do not get provisioned inside the managed VNets then? Yes, the dedicated SQL pools and serverless SQL pools or multi-tenant pass services and they are not provisioned inside the managed VNets. However, these clusters are provisioned inside the very secure Azure platform by the service fabric that is extremely hard to penetrate. Also, they run fully managed code by Microsoft that goes through various security standards and compliance checks to ensure tenant isolation. Besides the Synapse SQL, the self-hosted integration runtimes or SHIRs are also provisioned outside the managed VNet. As the name indicates, the self-hosted integration runtimes are hosted and managed by the customers inside their own machines in their own networks. So, it is important for the customers to take proper security measures to protect their SHIR, such as installing all the OS security patches regularly, getting all the latest updates for the SHIR, protecting the network perimeter by the use of firewalls and network security groups, etc. Well, that wraps up our video for today. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe, like, comment and share. Again, my name is Venkatesh Parasaraman. You can find me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Signing off now and I'll catch you on the next one.